Hello boys and girls, my name is Danny Mac, and yesterday I asked you if you wanted to know more about using Python in Blender, and the response took me by surprise. When we talk about Python for Blender, we're talking about two different beasts really. We have Core Python, and we have the Blender API that sits on top. Core Python is the programming language itself, which is a bit beyond this channel, but don't worry, there's literally thousands of tutorials on Python already. I'd personally recommend this one for beginners, which I'll link below. It's six hours long, but it covers all the basic principles to get you started, and even throws in a few exercises too. What I'm interested in is how we can implement this stuff to make Blender do what we want. With that said, let's look at how we can start automating some basic stuff with Python in Blender. So I was working on my rig yesterday and I came across this problem in that I wanted to make most of these bones look like the joints you get in Maya, just to tidy things up a bit. Now if you saw yesterday's video, you'd know this is very simple. You just add in an object of the shape you want your bone to be, in this case I want an empty sphere, then select your bone, and in the bone properties, you tell it to inherit the shape, and then scale it how you want it. The problem now is repeating this process for every bone, which could take some time. Fortunately, I was able to figure out the Python script to automate this in no time at all, since I only really needed to work out a single line of code, because I made Blender tell me the rest. That's right, you can make Blender tell you the code. Open up two new windows, and make one of them a Python console, and the other one an info window. Look at that, we have two lines of our code written right there for us. That's because whenever you do something in Blender, it conveniently writes out the Python for you right here. So let's break this line down. One thing you'll notice about Python in Blender is that whenever you want to access something in your blend file, it will start with bpy.context or bpy.data. For now, let's just focus on bpy.context, which refers to the current state, or context, of Blender. So if I was to type bpy.context.object, it would look at the file, see what object is currently active, and print it underneath. So the object is the armature, but I want to access the bones which live inside the object, and you can see from the code in the info box how we get there, but there's another way to figure this out, and I mean besides using Google, which you'll want to be using a lot, by the way. If I type bpy.con and now hit the hotkey control space, it will autofill the word, because Blender knows that at this point in the line of code, the only word that starts C-O-N is context. However, if I remove this and hit the autofill hotkey, notice now Blender isn't so sure what I want to type, and so it gives me a list of options. This is worth knowing because eventually you'll start working out lines of code just by using the autofill. So if I was to write bpy.context.object. and now control space, I can see all these properties I can access related to the context of the active object. This is potentially getting a bit confusing now, so let's get back to our script, and I'll open up the text editor while we work this out. And what we want to do is iterate over every bone in the armature, so for this we would use a for loop, and it would look something like this. For bone in bpy.context.object.pose.bones, do something. This says that for every bone in a list of pose bones belonging to the active object, do something. And what I want to make very clear, because it confused me at first, is that this word born is variable, meaning that it could be anything. We could write Donald Trump and it would still work in the same way. Perhaps I'll even demonstrate that later in the tutorial. Now what we want to do here is written in our info window, so I'll just copy and paste those lines of code. At the moment, the code is saying for every born in this list of bones, add a custom shape to this particular bone, which is obviously not what we want. Instead, let's change this to our variable, which is born. And what this will do is, every time the for loop iterates over a new born, it will rewrite whatever's between these square brackets with that current born. But I've included an intentional error just to illustrate a mistake I made yesterday. So if we try this out in our Python console, for every born in the active object, do that, then do that, and now I'll hit enter twice, and we get this error. Now, I wasn't sure why this happened at first, so what I did was type the for loop again, but this time I typed print born, 
And what this will effectively do is print in the console what is being printed between the square brackets. And so there's our problem. This is not in the same format as this, so something needs changing. Let's type out the full path of one of our bones. So I'll type bpy.context.object.pose.bones. Now if I autocomplete, you'll see a list of all the bones. I'll just choose one. Now if I autocomplete again, we get a list of properties available to this bone, and the one that sticks out to me is name. So let's give it a try and see what it does. Perfect. This is the format we need to put in between our square brackets. So all I need to do is add dot name because this variable contains all the information before that. So just to illustrate, if we again did a for loop that prints out each bone, but this time we add dot name, notice how it now prints out all of the names. So finally, if we implement this into our original code and then copy and paste each line into the console, it now behaves the way we want. Well, almost. Now I realize I don't want the neck or the eyes to inherit this shape. So what I'll do is select these. And this time I'll type for bone in bpy.context.selected pose bones, which obviously only affects the bones we have selected. And actually, let's change this to Donald Trump. Then again, I'll get Blender to tell me the next line. Copy and paste. Change this to our variable dot name, and there we go. So my challenge for you is to now use what you know to take a given set of selected objects and scale it to two on the x-axis. Good luck. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know because I'm just testing the waters with this and I'm not sure how effective I am at teaching a, such a complicated topic like this. So if you learn something from it, please like the video and share it with your friends and all that jazz. And all that jazz.